2,000 years ago, the Jewish world was divided between the house of Hillel and the house of Shammai. They seemed to disagree about everything. How to celebrate the holidays? Who can marry whom? What foods can be eaten? How do we speak with people? Whom do we allow into our schools? And of course, who's right? Nevertheless, the Mishnah states that they conducted the many disagreements in a healthy and constructive manner known as disagreements for the sake of heaven. Machloket l'shem shamayim. However, the Mishnah doesn't explain what exactly about these disagreements made them for the sake of heaven. The commentaries in the Mishnah offer four explanations. Each one comes with a tip for engaging in constructive conflict. The first explanation Despite the sharp disagreements between the houses, they succeeded in maintaining close relationships, eating in each other's homes, and marrying with one another. So the first tip for engaging in constructive conflict is debate the issues without attacking people and damaging relationships. The second was that Hillel, Shammai, and their students had a motivation for their disagreements beyond the purpose of winning and gaining honor. Perhaps they were trying to arrive at the best solution for everyone. So the second tip for constructive conflict is, check your motivations. Are you trying to win or solve problems? Point three. In the disagreements between houses, each listened to the other side and was open to admitting they might be wrong when the evidence presented supported the other side. So the third way to engage in constructive conflict is, listen to the other side and be open to admitting that you may just be wrong. The commentaries make a fourth point. Both Hillel and Shammai and their students equally spoke the words of the living God. They were both correct, despite holding opposite opinions. So the fourth tip for managing conflicts constructively is, consider that you both might be right, even though you hold opposite positions. This was how Hillel and Shammai managed their disagreements some 2,000 years ago. The question is, how do we today manage our disagreements between peers, family members, neighbors, or even political parties, nations, and religions? Do we too try to maintain good relationships while disagreeing? Do we check to see if our motivations are not just about winning the argument? Are we open to admitting that we may just be wrong? Can we acknowledge that sometimes we may just both be right? Then perhaps we can also constructively manage the many conflicts and disagreements of today for the sake of heaven.